servo motors. So commonly used in hobby electronics, robotics and RC applications. But how do they work? And how to use them? Let's find out. Let's take a look at the working of a general hobby servo. It has three wires coming out of the case. These wires lead up to a connector. But how to connect it? The red wire is the positive power supply, mostly 5 volts. The brown wire is connected to ground. The orange wire is the signal wire. A standard servo is controlled with this wire through PWM. But what is PWM? PWM stands for Pulse Width Modulation. To explain what that is, let's consider this diagram. On one axis we'll display the time commonly in milliseconds. The other axis will represent voltage. The upper limit is 5 volts as most servos use this level. Now consider these repeating pulses. The time in between these pulses is fixed. We'll call this the period. This is represented by the letter T. The length of the pulse we call the pulse width. Let's say we extend the pulse width. Or maybe even a bit longer. We now have changed or modulated the pulse width. In a servo, let's take a look at these repeating pulses. The pulse width here is 1 millisecond. The period for a standard servo is set at 20 millisecond. 1 millisecond corresponds with the 0 degree position in a standard servo. For 90 degrees, the pulse width will be extended. Ninety degrees generally corresponds to one and a half millisecond pulse width. While, of course, the period still remains twenty milliseconds. Now for one hundred and eighty degrees the pulse width will be extended even more. Two milliseconds will move the servo to 180 degrees. To sum it up, we need repeating pulses with a 20 millisecond period. The pulse width can be modulated in a range between 1 and 2 milliseconds. This corresponds to a range from 0 to 180 degrees position. It might seem a bit complicated right now. You're probably wondering how to make the PWM signal. Well, in fact, it is really simple to do practically. I will show you in a moment, but first, let's see how the servo actually works. To understand how the servo works, let's open it up to see. If we open the case, it reveals the circuit board. We can take the entire circuit board out. We can see that there's really not that much inside the servo. It mainly consists of a small high-speed DC motor. And next to it is a potentiometer or variable resistor to measure the position of the output shaft of the servo. The circuit board fits in like this so the potentiometer slides over the output shaft. At the top of the servo we have a gearbox with a set of gears to increase torque and reduce speed of the output shaft to make it powerful and precise for various applications. So how does it know when it reaches the desired position? 
What happens when you send the PWM position signal to the servo motor is this. The DC motor will start spinning and normally move the output shaft. Meanwhile, the potentiometer is set up as a voltage divider. That means the voltage at the middle pin will vary somewhere between 0 and 5 volts, depending on the position of the output shaft. The servo electronics knows that a certain voltage at the voltage divider corresponds to a certain position of the shaft. For example, 2.5 volts would mean that the servo is at 90 degrees, or 5 volts would mean it's all the way at 180 degrees. As the servo moves closer to the desired position, the voltage at the potentiometer will reach that value and the motor will stop spinning. If you try to force the servo out of that reached position, it will resist that movement. That's because you'll slightly turn the output shaft, changing the voltage at the potentiometer. The voltage won't match the desired position anymore, so it will either turn left or right to try to adjust itself to reach its desired voltage value again. This means that a servo will actively hold its commanded position, even when forces are applied. To actually control the servo, we need to create the right PWM signal. Most commonly in hobby electronics, servos are controlled through an Arduino. Arduinos have PWM capable output pins, which we can use. In the Arduino software, there are plenty of example codes. One of it is a simple code that allows you to control a servo with an analog input from a potentiometer. As we can see, in Arduino, it is super simple to drive servos. All we have to do is to firstly attach the servo at a chosen PWM capable pin. Then we simply send the position value to the servo, which has to be between 0 and 180 degrees. The Arduino does the rest. It automatically calculates the matching PWM pulse width and that's it. The delay at the end is simply there to give the servo time to reach the new position. To conclude, servo motors are pretty simple in construction and they are easy to use. They can be used for all sorts of projects going from RC to robotics and beyond. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave questions and comments in the comment section below. If you like this, please subscribe to see more like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.